meeting is now live. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Councillor Lynn Stagg, Cabinet Member for Traffic and Transportation. The meeting is being broadcast to enable the press and public to view it. We are virtually we are meeting virtually in response to the limitations placed on governance by the COVID-19 pandemic. The City Solicitor has advised that this meeting be run by reference to the model. Standing orders are set out in the local authorities, coronavirus flexibility of local authority meetings, regulations 2020, number 392. Please can members and officers turn their microphones off when not speaking. <clears throat> I will ask the opposition spokespersons to introduce themselves followed by the officers attending today's meeting. So, Councillor Simon Bosher. Uh, good afternoon, Lynn. Councillor Simon Bosher, I'm the Conservative spokesman for traffic and transportation. Thank you. Councillor Graham Heaney. Good afternoon, Councillor Stagg. I'm Councillor Graham Heaney. I'm the Labour Group spokesman for traffic and transportation. Thank you, Councillor Heaney. Um, officers, I, is Kevin here or is somebody, is it Nikki standing in for him? Okay, so Nikki. Hi, um, I'm Nikki Musson, Senior Transport Planner within the parking team, and I understand that Pam is introducing the report on this. Thank you, Nikki, and Jane Dedina. Yes, Councillor Stagg, I'm here. Thank you. Is, are there any other officers here? Yes, Pam Turton, Assistant Director for Transport. And Alison, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, Alison Lorna, um, Operation Transport Planner. Thank you. Right. We'll go on to the. Um, if I can get. Then you're on mute. My apologies. Are there any apologies? I've given mine. <laughs> I haven't received any apologies, Chair. Okay. Um, members, are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Boshin, no. Um, Councillor Heaney, no. No, no, no declarations of interest. No. Um, right. Um, we'll go straight into the main item then: residents' parking program of consultation. Reprior, uh, reprior. Apologies. Can I just um, ask a question? We have a number of other members present. Could we have um, some? Well, I think they're giving deputations, aren't they? So, do I need to introduce them now? Yes, yeah, so Councillor Stagg. Yeah, 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 yeah
then we go on to the, the first item. Nikki, are you presenting this? You're, you're on mute, Nikki. I think I'm introducing it, Councillor oh, Stagg, right, and then sorry, Nikki and Alison right. are there for the details points. Yeah, in Kevin's absence. So yeah. this report outlines the progress made to date on the residents' parking zone programme and recommends changes to the programme in view of development since the last report. The principles established in the September 2019 report developed in order to respond to the full council motion of July 2019 that a strategic plan for RPZ's consultation had formed the basis of this report i.e. that we have a rolling programme of consultation to respond to issues of displacement and future schemes are prioritised using a scoring matrix. This method of deciding how to carry out consultation was developed following a full council adopting the motion in July 2019. It is therefore recommended that progress since September 19 as set out in paragraph 3.7 is noted the amended programme as set out in Table 1 is agreed. And finally, that when residents no longer want an RPZ or need one, it is recommended that the next area to be consulted upon will be decided by the prioritisation matrix set out in Table 2 of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Um, Jane, do we have um, deputations from the public? Uh, no, there are none, Councillor Stagg. Oh, no written ones either? I haven't received any. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so in that case, um, we go to deputations from members, yes? So, Councillor, do you want, Councillor Heen and Councillor Bershaw, do, do you want to go first or do you want to come up um, after the deputations have been made? I think it would be better to hear the deputations because we'll only have to come back after them. <laughs> So, I, think, I think the protocol is to hear the deputations first, uh, Councillor Stagg. Yes, yes. I didn't know if you had deputations as well. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ben Jackson, would you like to go first? Uh, thanks very much indeed. Um, a fairly quick thing um, to, uh, on this. I've uh, got five things I want to quickly go through. Uh, the first is to record my thanks to um, uh, the officers who've worked so hard on this um, and Kevin and Nikki um, particularly who've done a, a, a wonderful job um, and to thank them for this. Um, I think this shows real progress um, in the work that's going on uh, and I think it shows that the rolling programme works really well um, it, it, and that there's now a systematic approach um, uh, and that we've moved away from the, the piecemeal approach that happened to parking in the past. Uh, and I th that, that appears to be working very, very well. It, it seems there are almost three lines. There's the, there's the systematic rolling program, um, but there's also the work about uh, going back to the more piecemeal approach of going back to other places that have asked, but also then um, looking at the review of, of, um, uh, of places that have got it and seeing if, if that works. Um, but it, it clearly does um, seem to work very well. I thought the results um, from the King's area were extremely interesting. Um, that 84% uh, of people said that it had made their lives easier um, in that the zone around the King's, uh, when there's a lot of disquiet at the beginning about whether it would work or not. So in terms of the report, um, I'm in, in terms of my ward, I've got three three things that members of the public have asked me to bring up. There are two sections in here um, where we've got consultations um, coming up fairly soon. One is MH, which is going from Highland Road up to Devonshire Ave, and then uh, MI from Devonshire Ave up to Goldsmith Avenue. Um, inevitably, people are disappointed that consultations couldn't happen when uh, lockdown was on, but, but, but that's just how things are, and, and that's, it was inevitable. But I think there's considerable worry from people in um, the northern section, the MI section, that they are last on the list um, and that they will be surrounded by other parking zones uh, and that will make their lives difficult. And it's the area with the strongest level of support for bringing in a parking zone, by far the largest number of returns um, in for um, 
saying people supported it, and also 80% of people wanting uh, action to sort out parking there. So um, I talked to Nikki, and there are different ways of doing it. It might be that we do the formal consultation in September in MH and October in MI. It might be able to wiggle things so that um, uh, they could be implemented together if that's what residents want. But I just think um, a bit of thought about the detail of how those two sit together would be sensible. The second two things are very small details that, that can be sorted later, but um, I just want to make sure that they're recorded. The first is uh, we're trying to make sure that in Devonshire Ave people who live on Devonshire Avenue uh, are able to park on both sides of the road, whichever, uh, and, and coming up with a scheme that does meet mean that that's possible uh, and then I've had an email in a, from somebody on the very very few houses I think there are about eight or nine houses on the northern side of Highland Road right down the end by um, near the roundabout at Henderson Road for whom their parking is normally just south of Highland Road um, and again just need to think about how we how we sort those it's, it's very very few but I think I'm sure there's a, 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 a piece of detail that we can do. But, but, but thank you, Lynn, to you uh, and, and to Kevin and Nikki for all the work they've done. Um, it really seems to be that this rolling program seems to work successfully and well and in a much more systematic way as opposed to the, um, uh, the sort of piecemeal approach that's happened in the past. So thank you very much indeed for, for that. It's really appreciated. Thank you, uh, um, Gerald. Um, who is next? Um, I think uh, Klaus Madden. Is he is he around? Is he... Uh, I don't think Leo's there. Shall I phone him and get him to to speak? Um, if that's okay. Um, hold on a second. Hello, this is Leo Now his phone's off. <laughs> Well, shall I, I, I'll I'll go on to somebody else? I'll go on to um, Dave then, because I think um, Dave Ashmore, you had a deputation, didn't you? You're on mute. Fell into the usual trap. Okay, I'm, I'm not on mute now, no. Fantastic. No, you're okay. Okay, um, oh, I'll get straight into it then. Um, yeah, as... Um, uh, Gerald has uh, mentioned there these, this rolling program we've got um, you know with my uh, environmental uh, cabinet member hat on uh, we've got to you know it's helpful for people to be rethinking car ownership but, you know the number of cars that are here us being you know uh, the most densely populated city outside uh, London kind of thing uh, and in this time of climate emergency it helps with that kind of focus on you know do people need to bring two, three, or more cars, uh, private owned cars, into areas? It helps people rethink uh, that uh, as well. So I think that's got a really good uh, role to play in our environmental ambitions. Um, but also, we've got to consider democracy as well. And I think that it's only right um, that people don't have things imposed upon them. I think it's only right that people in um, you know local areas are consulted uh, and are given their point of view. You know, this isn't something that we're imposing on people. This isn't something that people have to put up with. Uh, in fact, there was um, uh, uh, one area that was surveyed, and they said, "No, that's that's fine. That's up to them." So it's perfectly democratic there. Um, and also, as has been pointed out, um, it works. Uh, we've got a parking zone, the GA parking zone in Fratton, um, and it's very different when you, you know, when I'm doing my we used to do door to door. We're not allowed to do that anymore, door knocking. Uh, but when you speak to residents. Otherwise, um, down in, in the GA part uh, of Fratton, parking never comes up on the doorstep. You go much further afield, it's the number one issue all over the doorstep. Uh, so there is a need uh, for it. Um, and uh, as, as uh, Gerald said, the rolling uh, strategy is a good one. Uh, I don't think any local authority has been able to do a kind of all-in-one, uh, especially as they're not... Um, you know, Portsmouth very unique anyway, as I said before about us being densely populated. But no other, lo other local authority has been able to to do it. It's it's not doable on large areas. You know, there's resources and times and, and money, infrastructure. Um, I remember someone said um, someone said to me earlier about Chichester did them all in one go, but I don't think they did. I think they already had a 
they've already got most of the area in parking zones. This is just consult on whether to complete the other sections of it. So even that's not all in one go. Um, and plus, I think it's unfair if it is a kind of everyone has a say in it. It might end up with people in areas where they've got, you know, uh, their own driveways or they've got lots of garages. You know, they don't need to park on the road. They would have a say on people, such as in my area in Fratton, which has got a lot of flat, flat fronted properties, terraced houses, which were, you know, streets built for Victorian times when they didn't imagine that we'd have big uh, cars, uh, you know, two, three per household. Uh, so, yeah, that. I think that would be a nonsense. So I'm happy to see the, the, the role in strategic program go ahead with this. Um, and on that note, I'm going to say, um, because I think they work, um, and I'm glad to see that some roads above the GA parking zone uh, are now going to be, you know, they're on that uh, the work stream there, and that's really good to see. Uh, and I'd like to see if more info on the, the time, elaborated on the timings of that, specifically since um, the COVID thing put the mockers on a lot of things. Um, but also, you know, speaking to people in areas like, in my area, like Toronto Road, and Winchester Road, Queen's Road, parking's the number one issue up there. Uh, so I'd like to see, you know, inquire about how we go about getting them on the list of uh, people who can be surveyed and ask their opinions on people. So that's my um, ideas for a suggestion as with my ward councillor hat on. Uh, but yes, I'd, I'd also like to uh, say I appreciate um, what the cabinet members done and the officers have done there because this it's not an easy task. Uh, you can't please everyone with everything, but I think asking people in their local areas what they want uh, and doing it in a strategic way um, is is the way forward. So that's what I'd just like to say today. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, Scott, Cassa Pinkham. Um, uh, Councillor Stagg, I have Leo Madden on the phone now. If All right, if, uh, yeah. do you mind waiting, uh, Scott? No, not a problem then. No problem. Okay, okay. Leo, you're live. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, everybody participating for your indulgence on this. Uh, my laptop has crashed as it did yesterday in the middle of a, a licensing committee but that's life isn't it on this, uh, can I just say that I've always taken an interest in uh, resident parking uh, particularly when, when I was involved with the very initial one that we introduced into Portsmouth all those years back um, but today I'm particularly interested obviously in the one in Nelson Ward which is the FJ um, the parking zone for residents in, in what's been described as Stamshaw North and it's nice to see that uh, it is the result of residents contacting people because when we've been on the doorsteps, we've told them uh, to contact uh, traffic to express their interest in having or a consultation to having a zone or a consultation on the zone. Unfortunately for us and for many of the city, the, the, the main institute of the residents parking zones was the uh, neighbourhood forum, Stamshaw and neighbourhood forum. Uh, unfortunately, that's no longer in operation. I think, as I recall from the last papers, there's only 23 operating in the city anyway. And, and they were very good at uh, putting forward views on behalf of residents. About seven or eight years ago, as you will see from the map and the information on the map, um, the, the residents in the whole of Stamshaw and Tittner, uh were actually surveyed um, about residents' parking. And in the end, uh, only a residence parking zone was in implemented in what is now known as uh, Stumpshaw South. There was a little tweaking later, and then a scheme was agreed later for that part of Northern Parade, which is adjacent to Alexander Park, uh, and that was, I think, in 2018, if I recall. I'm here to support the consultation with residents in, in, in what, as I say, is to be known as Stumpshaw North. Um, from my reading of the map, um, but I, you know, my eyes are not the best of the world, and I, I, I couldn't enlarge it. It appears to include Tickner, so we may have to change the name of uh, that particular zone uh, to be surveyed. And I think uh, I heard a bit what Dave Ashmore said earlier on. He's absolutely right. You know, I mean, what we should be doing is surveying uh, residents to find out if they want the zone or not, and then decide and then on their decision. Uh, to make sure that it happens or it doesn't happen. The problem back in eight or nine years ago was that there were very few people actually, despite reminders to people, very few of them actually replied in the different roads in Stamshaw uh, to the consultation exercise. And that's when we had this scheme with half Stamshaw done and half not done. 
things, of course, you can since then, as they have in areas all over the city. There are different residents there, um, and, and there's a steady increase in car ownership, and I've, I've taken that out of the report at uh, 5.2, uh, because it's absolutely right, and we've got to care for people and their cars, and of course, uh, persuade people to use other modes of transport. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm here, as I said, to, to give my support to the consultation exercise in F, proposed FK. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Um, Scott, Councillor Peter Harris. Um, thank you very much um, for that. Yeah, Councillor Stagg, much appreciated. I'm just um, looking at the map on the, in Appendix A, which is FI, which is the parking zone that, the, the proposed parking zone into Doyle Court, which, as you can appreciate, is quite a small area of the city and it's quite a contained issue. So, I mean, the only disappointment I really have about this is the fact that it's been on the program since 2015 and seemingly the program has been pushing it back, back and back further. And, and just basically, I've just had the question from residents when you knock their door, especially around election time. Do you, uh, the question I get from residents there is when are we when are we going to get our zone and what's going on with it? So the common it's a common problem um, within that area, and I accept that it's a minute issue compared to some of the other issues that we have in the city. But at the moment, those residents effectively could be waiting seven, eight, or nine years for their parking zone, which is effectively what I think from looking at the methodology that is being used, effectively what's going to happen. I see you nodded your head, Councillor Stag, so I think you're probably in agreement with me there. And you will also be aware of we had a planning application go through last week, which is going to put greater impact, especially on that area of the city, um, on the other end of Doyle Avenue. So the pressure, the pressure is there, and I think that that sort of area, I mean, has been waiting quite patiently for a long time. But also, I think the same could be said for the JH zone, the FJ zone, the JG zone, the KE zone, the GC zone, and the extension to AB and Wimmering. I mean, these are all being moved on for effectively what is a new program because that's what the, I don't know, that's what the, the administration wants to do, which unfortunately seems very south centric you know, I know, it's, I know it's warmer down south than it is up north I know it's a lot colder up in the north of the city but um, I, just, I just think if we're going to do this fairly we should be looking at the work stream of people that have asked previously, rather than going to a newer work stream and saying, oh no, you can have your own, you can have your own, but people in the North City have to wait. I just don't think that's right. I think if we're going to be doing this properly and doing it in a democratic way, we should be asking those people, you know, again, saying, are you happy about this? You know, and I don't think they will be. I think that, I think the residents here are going to kick up a stink because, I mean, as I've said, seven or eight or nine years potentially for an issue that's not going to go away. And I think, I, I don't envy you as a cabinet member. I can, I can see obviously... Um, you, wow, this one's heating up for you at the moment. I can definitely see that. Um, and I think maybe the way to, to cool this down a little bit would be to just look at this again. I, I'd like you to take this report away and potentially burn this report. Um, oh, sorry, Councillor Stagg. I see that you're telling someone to be quiet. Sorry. Um, I'd like if you could just burn this report. And, um, sorry, yeah, I've got one. I know they're terrible. Um, at doing that. No, if you could just effectively burn the report and just uh, look at it from a different angle from the north of the city, you know, because I think this will take a lot, of a lot of the heat out of the situation when it comes to the parking zones across the city. Because, I, I mean, we represent our city of 14 wards. We don't just represent Southsea and, and Milton and uh, we represent places like Hilsey. Yourself we represent Baffin, so I know they have a clamour for certain issues over around that, such as this. We've got Councillor um, Brochure who is representing Drayton and Farlington. So, I think at the moment this is just very Southie centric and this is not a fair reflection on what is going on in the city and we've got people waiting seven, eight or nine years potentially for a parking zone which I just don't think is acceptable at the moment and I understand that you're in a hard place um, as the cabinet member and you've got a decision to make but maybe I think to speak to the parking manager and say to him this probably isn't going to fly but it's fundamentally your decision Councillor Stagg and um, I just hope you can take the, take this thing out of this one for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What you're saying is exactly what I said at last week's meeting, because now that the H zones are not on the on the card at the moment, um, there is room. I think we have just about that capacity. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, Councillor Stagg, if you can just allow me this, it's, it's a very minute zone. It is a very minute issue that I'm pointing out for this one 
set of residents. So I'm not, I'm not, obviously I'm fighting their corner. I mean, it's only four out of the 10 households recorded, which isn't a great number when you think of some of the issues. But I think um, there is a lot of casework behind this, which I think the officer can probably elaborate on a lot more than I can from historic purposes. But um, yeah, it's fundamentally in your gift. So I'll, um, I'll hand it back over to you, but thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, you said it's assisted living, isn't it? You're on mute. Not, not hundred percent. I mean, you've got people of vulnerable ages. It's, it's a very, very much a mix there. Yeah. Um, the residents that I deal with, um, some of them do have some medical issues and such, but I won't go into that here for out of their, out of their um, respectful um, nature because it's, it's their issue, not mine. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, there's nobody else. I don't think making deputations are there. No. Okay, so it's over to um, Kazahini. Do you want to Hello, start? Hello, Lynn. Lynn. So, oh, sorry. My apology. I couldn't see you. weren't You weren't on my screen, and the side, and and your name hasn't come up either. So, my apologies, Matt. Um, go ahead. No problem. No. Well, I'm I'm used to it. I'm a W. I used to be left off the end of registers at school sometimes. So you know, it's it's just. Just one of those things you get used to. Uh, your, your, um, your picture wasn't there either, you see. So like, there's so no picture and no name at the bottom, no initials. So apologies. Oh, no problem at all. Um, uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, on this. Um, I'd just like to, and and, uh, and actually, I'll I'll, I'll address uh, um, uh, actually just just offer offer my understanding of the situation in Door Court. Um, it's very like uh, some of the other places we have in the city. Um, I, I've um, I actually, when I was working as a support worker, supported someone in Door Court, and I know how small an area that is, but it's right next to the main road and, and everything. So, um, and it's just like somewhere like MA, um, and actually I'll come to MA first uh, in Eastern Craneswater. So, obviously, MA is on the uh, list to have their uh, zone reviewed in terms of to make sure that it's the right zone for them. Uh, and people have been talking to me for quite some time about that, and I've been feeding back to the officers about this so I'm very pleased that it's towards the top of the list to be reviewed uh, I would ask that it's done as soon as possible it would be minimal resource uh, to do the two rows Leopold and Beatrice um, and and just just have that have that done um, nice and quickly uh, to make sure that whatever they have there is is right for them uh, with the uh, different kind of parking zones they have a 24 hour zone there for a very good reason because 24 hours a day they do have uh, parking issues because people coming down in the evening to Albert Road um, as well as in the day etc but at the same time we've got to make sure that <clears throat> uh, that we don't get uh, dumping from zones that have the two hour restrictions where no one else can park apart from the uh, apart from residents so, so how that works will be up to how the residents in uh, Leopold uh, and Beatrice um, have are asked in the MA parking zone uh, what they say, but but I would ask that out of the ones that are review that are there for review that that is done um, at the top of the list if possible, uh, due to the uh, how small it is. Uh, moving on to the uh, rolling program, uh, just echoing what uh, Councillor Vernon Jackson and Councillor Ashmore have already said, uh, this rolling program is working. Only um, only the other day. I was speaking to uh, someone on the phone who had a query about um, who, who lives in the area which is being formally surveyed now, so in the MG straight MF extension area um, uh, of Festing Road East and uh, Festing Road of East of there, and uh, and they were saying about oh you know if we if we say we want to zone how quickly will it come in? They were surprised how quickly that would happen, but also speaking to the other areas uh, so the MJ the proposed MJ zone which would uh, if if on this program if, the, if this goes through today that they would uh, they would start this they would have their survey um, their informal survey starting by the end of next month and that they would be formally surveyed by Christmas again they were surprised how fast that would move and I think this is the difference of this program is that before um, we had parking zones that were put in, areas next to them were left for not just years, actually for nearly decades. So uh, if we think of the uh, the MD zone as it is at the moment, that, that part of MD zone was surrounded on three three sides by 
parking zones for 14 years. So they waited 14 years to be asked about having a parking zone put in and filing this administration, not just asked them, but got their parking zone in because they wanted it. And I think that's the really important thing about this program, that people can see it's logical. They might, they do have to put up with displacement because all parking zones displace. We know that right from the beginning, right back 21 years, that a parking zone just displaced to another area. And therefore the right thing to do is ask the areas next door. If you ask two bigger areas and you, you, um, you compartmentalize them into zones, but you ask them all at once, what you can do, which, which, uh, was a, um, uh, something that would have happened if, if uh, back, uh, in 2014 was that zones around it without having, the, uh, knowing about other zones being in place say no. They would then be completely surrounded by parking zones and you're left with the situation of everyone else has a parking zone because they say yes and the bit in the middle says no so they don't. Which of course, what do you do? Do you just leave that or do you come back and do it? So effectively it's double handling. This is the only way to do it properly. Um, I'm really pleased as well that this now fills in the rest of uh, the, the seafront. So you'll get into your dead ends in, in, in this program. So we're going all the way down to the, um, Lumsden Road, um, Fort Cumberland Road ferry road area. Um, and so everyone is having an opportunity. And also the most important thing about this, and this goes back again to Councillor Peter Harris's, um, point is that, and, and, and to actually make that point to him that once these streams are finished, we can then move on to other areas of the city. And we've already heard from Councillor Madden about, about Stamshaw North. Um, we've, we've heard about Doyle Court. There's other areas in Caution that are on that list. There's prioritisation of other areas in places like Charles Dickens as well. So it, it all gives us that opportunity to say, this is when we're going to end with these streams and then we can move on to others. But I do think it's absolutely right that we don't, like in the past, introduce parking zones and then don't ask the areas next to them for years and years and years because that's what causes real issues for people um this is a this is a really good um really good scheme i'm i'm very pleased that we've got formal surveys going on at the moment um which though they've been delayed they are they are happening that the uh, parking zones that are coming in on the 29th in um md Extension MF in, in, in the Cranes Water and East South Sea areas are, um, are coming in with as little delay as possible with, with, with COVID, um, uh, thinking of COVID, uh, in terms of, and I know there's been quite a lot of resources issues that COAS have, have, have had to deal with in supply issues. Um, but this is a program that works and no one is, no one is going to be left next to parking zones for year, for, for, for let alone years a year without being asked about do they want one of their own um, and if they say yes having it implemented so I think that's a very refreshing change uh, it makes a complete difference to how let's be honest all parties in the past didn't do this properly whether it's Labour or Conservative or Lib Dem led councils no one got a handle on this until we've done that now so I, I really support this programme um, I hope it will go through and that we uh, make sure that we have a good stream as well of reviewing the existing zones, making sure it's right, but actually making sure this time as well, unlike when last reviews were done, that it's not about there's a risk that we're going to take your parking zone away because I think the whole point is what's come out in the past is once people have parking zones, they want to keep them. And I think it's really important not to, not to sort of even offer that up. It's really important to say, are your times right? Is it still right? Because some of these parking zones have been in for a very, very long period of time and people's needs change, car usage changes. So I, I, I really support this, this program, these schemes, and uh, I, I hope that uh, it will go through as is in the paper. And with that, I have to go. So I, I'll leave you to the rest of the meeting uh, as I've got another meeting on now about the seafront. Um, so thank you very much. I see the fences. So thank you. Very much. Can I think just put it to you that um, things that, that people actually perhaps forget, and that is that um, 
Lesnar's Parkinson's was suspended for about four, four or five years. So there was nothing going on. And that was because it was costing us far too much money. And the second thing was we only had Nikki doing them. And Nikki was 50% of her time, because the other 50% was doing TROs and every um, double yellow line and, and white line and drop curb and everything else, because she knows every one of them in the city. Um, so, you know, don't nod, shake your head, it's, it's very true. Um, so, I mean, there were constraints, uh, lots of constraints, and we're in a better place now, but we, we still have not got masses of people to do it, because it is, takes a, it's a long process that, that, that does it. Anyway. Any more other, any more deputations, no? Right, come over to um, Clancy Healy, because you're top left on my screen, and you're in the middle of my screen, Simon, so I'll get back to you after Clancy Healy, okay? Clancy Healy. Well, I'm going to start with a question, because <clears throat> obviously I want to ask some questions about the report, and then I, I will, obviously, I'm happy for Simon if you want to ask questions, then we might do comments after that. Um, I want to refer back to the 219 report. I'm just going to call, I think my indulgence, just read a short section just because I want to clarify this. It says in section 6.1 of last year's report, it says additional resources have been recruited to help deliver the program. An additional senior transport planner has been recruited for parking teams to progress traffic regulation orders and parking zones, working three days a week. In addition, the level of resources available to support the team has also been increased, enabling two work streams to operate at the same time. Now, am I correct in saying that that is where we are now? Those same resources are available for the new program if it's agreed today? Um, not, uh, not quite, no. The, um, the senior transport planner we had working three days a week was Tracy, um, and she was only with us six months, um, and she started on the H work stream, which is a lot of work on, on that one. And then Alison, who's with us, today has taken over as an operational transport planner um, and then took over HC, took it to TNT and that one obviously wasn't approved and that means that that work stream then has ceased which is why we need to update this report and the program. Um, so Alison is now helping me with the very challenging time scales um, of the M work stream to try and do things a bit quicker. Okay, Graham. Okay, right. So that we, we have got slightly less resources than we had last year on the basis of what you said, probably one person down, just not working through those. Okay. Um, I've, I've had a number of emails from residents about these parking, which is rather unusual. It may have something to do with the fact that a leaflet was put out about this um, back in July, and people have picked it up from there. They've been contacting me and other councillors. Um, with relation to the proposed M zone. Um, a number of people have asked, and I've got the three questions here that specifically have come up quite often. Um, one is, where Devonshire Road is concerned, um, I've had a number of people saying, I, like, I didn't hear that. Right, they would like to see um, Devonshire Avenue, uh, both sides of Devonshire Avenue, in the same zone, because currently one side is in one zone and the other side is in the other zone, according to the, um, the map. And I'm just wondering if, if that is something that you will take into account in the consultation, because I've said to people who have written to me, um, it's all well me raising it at the meeting, but it's really important that when the consultation goes, you actually say this again, because that's that's important. But um, the other point that was linked to that was people were saying that they wanted Devon Channel to be um, in one zone, in the MI zone. That's the other point that came across. So they'd rather that the whole of Devonshire Road was in one zone rather than in two zones. And the other question really was the issue about um, the implementation of the zone. There was all a concern that the MI zone is the smallest zone. It will be, as Catherine and Jackson said, be surrounded by other potential other zones that are being implemented. And they feel that will put them under extra pressure uh, and they would like to see uh, their zone being uh, progressed at the, at the same time. I suppose the other issue that comes out of that as well is, is that we've talked in the past about where there are boundaries zone, whether we're going to have what we call fuzzy boundaries, allowing people on different sides to be able to park on uh, in either zone. So I'm wondering what thought has been given to that in relation to the boundaries for the M zone that clearly would apply to Devonshire, unless you put it in one zone on its own, or you gave them the opportunity to park in either. 
So that's a rather complicated set of questions that I just don't know. I'm, I'm they sure may not be for full answer, answer now. They may not be for full answer now, but I wanted to make those clear. Yeah. Those are the things that are being raised. I've had the same questions actually, Graham. So uh, um, I, I've asked him, Nikki, as well. So, Nikki, can you give us um, the benefit of your vast experience? Yeah. Knowledge? I, said, I think the, ma the main thing to say is that all this feedback is really important because we're, we're still finalising the proposals for these two. Yeah. Um, again, it's a program of consultation. We don't know which zones are going to go in where, which was. Um, demonstrated by the H work stream. There were, we've taken nine areas off the program um, under the H work stream and we've added three under the M stroke N. Um, so this is this is the right time. We've had lots of feedback about Devonshire Avenue and there are options available. Um, we can either include it all of it as you say in MI, um, which would be a similar approach to other areas, or at the moment, uh, the south side could be in MH as it was surveyed. The north side could be in MI as that was surveyed. Um, but residents of Devonshire Avenue could park on either side of the road, which would be enabled by signage. Um, so I think, as Councillor Heaney said, it's, and everyone says, it's really important that people let us know what they think and what they prefer to see when it gets to the consultation. Yeah. Okay. Um, Does that answer all your questions, Graham? I think we need to be clear when we give a consultation what options are available to people yeah, because right. they need to know what they're going to be offered. If we're offering a range of options, like you can have a fuzzy zone, you could be a lot of, they just need to be clear what they're going to be offered. I think that's, that's, that's the key. Point. So uh, that's what then we can do, Nikki, isn't it? Give them the three options. No, no yeah. it's, it's something we, we need to decide before the consultation. Yeah. So, pe yeah. So it's I've had a lot of different ideas a minute. Um, and everything that I, that's being fed back to me um, is really useful and will help develop those proposals. Um, I think if we're going to consult on both zones, um, you know, you can you can change them slightly. You know, as long as we don't put in dobby lines down the whole road when we propose residence parking, you can make slight changes. So we could have three options there: either Denton Avenue being in MI or in MH or fuzzy boundary where present on either side can park on the other side. Yeah, I think I think we're all we're keen to, we're all keen to avoid um residents of Devonshire Avenue not being able to park on one side of their own road. Because obviously residents of other zones can park on either side of the road. So whichever scenario we go with, it will mean that those residents will be able to park on both sides of their own road. Okay, Graham. The one the other question I didn't get, I didn't hear an answer to was the, whether the zone the MI can be done at the same time as the other two because they're really concerned about the. You've gone on mute again. I've got... <laughs> it's, it's the, the MI will actually be done simultaneously with the others because they're really concerned about the knock-on effects. Yeah. yeah, we're jumping ahead a little bit because um, I say we're consulting on MF extension MG at the moment and then we're going to. Uh, consult on MH uh, next month and then potentially MI in October. I think it's it's more to do that if they're approved when we come to those decision meetings um, potentially for approval is that we can stagger implementation so that we, we reduce the displacement effects or, or even give them a start date so that at least they know when it'll happen. So they both go in at the same time if, if they vote in favour? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm reluctant to speak on behalf of my colleagues in the, the parking team because I don't know if they could process all those permits for the same start date. But if there's a four week um, gap, you know, that, that's a lot shorter than we've had in the past. Um, unfortunately, the, the residents of MH and MI have been suffering from displacement from ME for, for months because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and that, that can be anticipated and it's not something we look to repeat. So we really want to, if they uh, both are in favour, obviously, um, we need to get them both in as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, if, if you came to a point where you were deciding whether to implement MH, we could ask for it to wait until we've had a decision on MI and then try and put them in together all around the same time. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Councillor Heaney? Yeah, I mean, 
The reason I ask that question is because now I want to ask about the new zones which have appeared this year as a priority for the first time, which are ND, NC in particular, and also MK. Given the uncertainties that you just said about the implementation of zones or whether they are or whether they aren't, why are those three new zones now the top priority uh, for the future program? Um, those are part of the rolling program. So the report last year, we added MG, MH, MI, and then that program is, has progressed. So now we're, we've added the immediately, the areas immediately adjacent, which is the, the idea of the rolling program. Um, and as we said, we've we've taken off nine areas that were the H work stream because they're no longer required. And I think it's important to note that the rolling program is about demand. So when we get to a stage where residents don't want or, or need residents parking, then that will stop, as we've seen with the H work stream, which would have taken several years to complete. Um, so we now we've actually got a shorter program. Um, and whether or not those zones um, think that they want residents parking um, means that we can get on with other areas more quickly. Yeah, I think it's very important that those areas that have been waiting for several years um, are um, surveyed and, and consulted on as soon as possible at the same time as the rolling program, if we can manage it as far as um, um, officers are concerned. Because I mean, it is very frustrating if you've been waiting all that time and you've not, and you see other areas going. And I understand why the rolling program is it necessarily it, is that it rolls on. But at the same time, you have to think we mustn't forget those areas that have been waiting. I think that's very important. And I said this in our meeting last week. Have we had requests for residents parking in the in the in the MK areas? Um, there have been requests. Um, I, I would expect. Like, I don't. I don't know. But at the minute, we've got residents in MI who are extremely concerned about what's happening near oh, them. Yes, and it's, I it's think, I think, the M, I think we covered the M1. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. It's yeah, the, 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 so that's why why they were included last year is the same reason why those on the, the other side of Eastney Road are included this year for the same reasons. Right, can we go to um, Councillor Bershaw? <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Lynn. I've got a couple of questions if I can ask and just get some clarification on them in the first place. Um, in 4.2, which highlights the informal consultation in the 3M areas, and you've got some percentages of yes, no, and unanswered. Um, a couple of meetings ago, we, we we put forward the suggestion, and you agreed that we should put in the total number of properties that were actually sent and what the return was, because I doubt in any of those areas, uh, or it'll be a famous first, we had a hundred percent response in each zone, and so, so when we're talking in terms of uh, the MG Festing Grove area, at fifty-nine percent said yes. That's going to be fifty-nine percent of a percentage return, and I'd be interested to know what the total responses were, figure-wise, and the total number of properties that were actually sent to surveys, because I suspect that that fifty-nine percent is actually probably somewhere if, if history repeats itself down somewhere in the region of somewhere around about 10 to 15 percent. Um, yeah, I remember that, that conversation um, and I, I think when we come to the report on the consultation on MG area we will certainly include those figures um, as you've requested, we'll include the number of properties. This is really just a, a summary for, for the um, umbrella programme as it were. But I, I, Simon, when I was cabinet member before I said it was um, um, part, the parking manager was um, oh, Ken, okay. um, and I said to Ken, this, this is this is wrong having only such small returns. I think we should have a 51% return and then 51% of those returns in favour before we put it in. Absolute, complete and utter failure, um, because people forget um, and they you know, they put the, the forms in, in the, the green bin or whatever, and uh, so you'll never get... Um, a it was a very short programme, that one. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Lynn, and, and, and fair enough. 
that it would be good when we're using percentages to have some sort of context against which they can be judged. Because it looks, the way it reads in 4.2, 59% of all the properties in the MG Festing Grove area said yes, they want a zone. That's how the report reads. And uh, I, I would question that for exactly the reasons that you've just said, Lynn. And with the best in the world, if we're using this as a driver, we need to paint the entire picture. So therefore, if we only had a, a, you know, a 20% uh, response rate, so therefore 59%, was that just over 10% actually wanted to zone, it should be put in a context that at the end of the day, so that anybody that revisits these reports in a public environment, because they can do so, can actually see what sort of response there was for or against or undecided. Uh, and the 2% unanswered, was that somebody sent it back and didn't put a, didn't tick a box? Is that what we're actually saying? Yeah. So it didn't get in the green bin, somebody just sent it back <laughs> without ticking a box. That's right, yeah. Yeah, they don't indicate either way. Separately, Nikki, because uh, I'm not asking for it all now, can you send me those actual figures, please? Yes, those yeah. Three so zones. Numbers. I will absolutely ensure that when we come to reports on the consultation for MG, that the property numbers are included. Um, I think at the moment we don't have a threshold for how many uh, surveys are returned. It's just if there's a majority in favour, um, we'll con we'll progress to the formal consultation. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but people need to be able to make an informed judgment when they read the report. That, that, uh, that to me, may well reflect the responses, but arguably it is slightly misleading in the fact that it doesn't give the number of responses. And we've had little tables in the past with actual physical numbers in it. And I think that should be the norm for informal and formal consultations so that people can make their own and if they're statisticians that they can do their own number crunching and come up with the same answers. That to me at this moment in time is misleading. Yeah. So then, else, Simon, it's um it's transparency. Yeah. Well that's not transparent at this moment. No, that's what I'm saying. This is what um, we need is transparency. Yeah. So I've made a note when we formally consult on the MG and HMI areas and we bring a report back to you um, this committee, I will absolutely make sure that the property numbers are responsive. But if you can send the informal ones to me in the meantime, and I would imagine Graham will probably like a copy as well, yeah, that, would be, that would be useful. The other of... one I have, and it's a bit of a clarification thing, in 4.4, it talks about residents in the area around GB, Alverstone Road area, and it basically says that they were not in favour uh, of, of an expansion of the residence parking zone, 54 to 46. Well, again, the same argument applies with regards to the numbers. Okay. But when you go down to the work stream in Table 1, GB Alverstone area extension seems to be included for a formal and a, an informal and a formal consultation. And yet, back in 4.4, they were asked in 2019, um, and it goes on to say, therefore, no formal proposals were put forward and residents were advised accordingly. Are we talking about geographically the same thing? Because if we are, then why, if something that was rejected in 2019 suddenly appeared back in the Workstream programme? It's, 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 it's the answer in 4.5. Um, Simon, yeah. it's um, since um, ME has been put in, they're now um, having the displacement, massive amounts. They have additional parking restrictions during the matches at Fatton Park, and they didn't think they wanted permit parking then, but unfortunately, because the ME zone's now gone in, and directly south of them, they've got GA to the north and GB, there's literally nowhere for residents to put their vehicles on match days. So something that was turned down because the zone has come in is now going back into a prioritization in the work stream. Why doesn't that same logic apply to some of those areas in uh, table two then? Because I mean, Councillor Madden was championing 
what he called stand short north, which I admire his optimism, but if you look at the rolling program, it's going to be 18 months, two years before we get to that one potentially, because that one effectively has been squeezed by zones around it, and yet it's in a different work stream. Why is one in one and one in the other then? Um, it's down to demand. So in um, Stanshaw North, they were their formal consultation was in 2012, um, and we've agreed to put it back on the programme because we've had a number of, of um, requests from residents for over an eight-year period. For the GB zone, we've been inundated with emails um, because of the um, because of ME going in as part of the rolling programme. So we've put GB back on the rolling programme. I think a lot of people give up the ghost as well. They've waited so long, they don't ask any longer. Yeah, that's probably because they're constantly getting the cold shoulder by the sound of it, Lynn. Well, I don't think it's um, a cold shoulder. If, if there are not enough um, requests, you know, then, then people... Because um, we've, we've got a, a, a table now of, of um, how, many time, how many people request and um, how near they are to various places, etc. So, so that's addressing that problem. I think okay. effect, effectively, if I... Maybe it's it's probably my fault. If we had surveyed them after ME, it probably would have been, you know, better. It's just now that they're surrounded and they've got the restrictions on football match days, that's when they're really suffering. Um, so it, it was part of the rolling program, and we've, we've just put it back in. But I agree with you, Simon, about some of those other ones, Stanshaw North. I mean, I, I a resident got in contact with me, and I went to Strode Road, mm. and I mean, it was just so horrendous. I had to, in order to go and see her, I had to park on double yellow line. There was nowhere else for me to go. Um, and it was, it's just horrendous. So I would be totally in favour of that being um, surveyed straight away because uh, she pointed to one house and um, where between um, the, the people in the house, they had three vans and four cars in, in a little house coming onto the, straight onto the... Onto so, the so given the fact that the council resolution was it July last year? And I think I think it's actually mentioned in the meeting, uh, mentioned in the report. Just if I can just locate it, if you'll bear with me. Um, it's asking for the cabinet member for traffic and transportation to draw up and publish a strategic plan for the management of parking in residential and non-residential areas, covering a period of at least five years. So. On that basis, if we take the, the one that Councillor Madden mentioned, which was FJ, where is that in the plan then? Okay. I think due because to you're the, on a programme at this moment that's effectively it, running for 18 months. Yeah, we've, we've actually shortened it this time because we've we've had the delays with, with the, um, the pandemic. It's it's really thrown us, and we've had to work extra hard to catch up. Um, and this is going to be very challenging. Um, and I think the problem we had with the programme last year is when people see that they could potentially be five, six, six years down the line, it's not really helpful for people. And that might not actually happen. Um, so this is a more realistic um, time frame, both for us and I think for residents, um, so that when we get to June next year, um, then we can bring something back that will probably look completely different. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of looking at the program, Lynn, um, and we've had, I mean, I mean you, people are using the phrase rolling program, but effectively all you're doing is chasing the displacement around South Sea at this moment in time, because because we've had we've had we had a program last year um, which had zones um, which didn't include the ferry road ones, and all of a sudden they appeared in the program because you're chasing the displacement across the city effectively. But those people, and uh, we've heard Councillor Ashmore mention it, and Councillor Winnington mention it, we've heard Councillor Peter Harris mention it, we've had Councillor Madden mention it, they've all been talking about areas that have been sitting there waiting since 2015 to be dealt with, and effectively it's not going to happen. What's probably going to happen, uh, and I'm being cynical here, is that I, I wouldn't surprise me if Stanshaw North and some of the areas that Councillor Winnington mentioned suddenly come to the top of the list and get prioritised. But those, those are a lot of areas, you know, up in the cold north, if you like, that are sitting around waiting for, well, they've been waiting five years in some instances, um, 
You can also, you know, from being on a program in 2015, and all you're doing is bumping them backwards and backwards and backwards. What you should be doing is what the council decided in July last year, I'm putting together a five-year program which includes when those areas on table two are going to go through that particular process, not just freezing them out, which is what's happening at the moment. Well, what, what I've asked for, what I'd like to see is three work streams. Um, one is the rolling program, one is the ones that are um, outstanding, and the other one is the reviews. Um, but we need to have the staff to do that, and I don't know if they're, they're coping. We have. Well, a I, 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 I appreciate what you're saying, Councillor Stagg, and, and my sympathies lie with you, Nikki. I'm, I'm not. I'm trying not to shoot the messenger in these particular arguments, but I can remember at that same council meeting getting completely shouted down by the, the leader of the council because they they crippled the resource there. Now clearly that is patently untrue from what uh, Councillor Heaney elicited earlier on. And I can't see how you can divide three work streams into two members of staff. No, we have got to Lula as well. So um, it is, yeah. it is possible. We do have but it will it may take longer to do if it's divided into, into three work streams. But I think they are essential to have. Um, we do have more resources, and that's why at the moment we're, we're actually dealing with probably five consultations. We've got Lula and a guy called Chai and every day they are banging through the responses, answering the questions and there are hundreds of them um, which we wouldn't have been able to do before and so we're doing that um, and obviously we've had we have Alison now that the H work stream which again was nine areas that was on there now that they're not on there we can do the M's and M's much quicker and this program although it's added three to the rolling program we've, we've taken off nine and it's a shorter program if I may um, input into this, I mean, I think that Nikki's articulated the difficulties in putting a timetable to any of the residence parking programmes. They do fluctuate, and I think we've always shied away from giving false expectations. Um, we need that flexibility to be able to respond as and when um, the, the views coming from residents. So as with the example of the the, the H um, zones, they weren't they weren't um, wanted Wanted by the residents. Oh sorry. They weren't wanted by the residents. And so so that works from stop to be flexible and it in working right now. Also, it's worth noting the fact that it isn't just um, Nikki, Alison, that are working. Here. It has a significant on. Um, it has a significant impact on a lot of the areas within the transport department and resources that we need to want to implement the schemes and to go through the consultation. Um, as you'll appreciate at the moment, we are incredibly stretched, and I think. There is a logic in ensuring that we are um, reviewing and renewing the programme on a more frequent basis, just to make sure that we give residents a much more um, clear indication. So, if I can, Lynn, for those people in places like Mulberry Avenue and Doyle Court and Stamshaw area that turn around and say, when are we likely to be consulted on the zones that we've been waiting for for 2015? What answer should I give to those people? Well, as I said, I've, I've asked for a third work stream to come online to deal with those that are outstanding. I mean, I, mean, I, I suppose my answer is going to be, because it's a bit of a rhetorical question, is that if, you, if you've drawn up a plan that's going to last at least five years, well, then the answer to them is probably some point in the next five years, Mr and Mrs President which probably isn't one that you want to hear, because some of them are going to be waiting for at least 10 years, while other zones in, uh, uh, all right, I'll say it, Liberal Democrat areas are being bumped up the list. Yeah. That's how it comes across to a lot of residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can see how that would be, um, how would be um, interpreted, yes. That is not, from my point of view, that is not the way it, it's been done. It is the program, which is actually responding to the criticisms 
that your party made about the way um, the residence parking zones are being implemented. So we said about a rolling programme because we can't do it across the city. So that is why that is there in the first place. But I fully appreciate, and I've already said, and I'm not just saying it in this meeting, um, I've, I've said in meetings that I have before our meetings on a Thursday, that I want to see those areas that are outstanding. We talked about it last week. In fact, Mulberry Lane came up um, in deep, deep conversation about Mulberry Lane as one it, of them. It did, and we didn't get an answer. I mean, you had the opportunity to rewrite the report and, and haven't effectively. You're sticking with what was on the Lib Dem leaflet that went out, which is uh, which is disappointing. I haven't and seen. We, I really Lib think. Lib sorry. I, can't, I haven't seen the Lib Dem leaflet, so I can't. I can't say that I stuck with that because I don't know what I was sticking to. Um, I mean, but I. I'm glad to I'm God's... It's on the second stream to be addressed, and it's 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 in there on. Is it table two? I can't remember which one. Well, I have to say, Lynn, I'm gobsmacked that the Lib Dem cabinet member for traffic and transportation hasn't seen a Lib Dem traffic and transportation leaflet when everybody else in the south of the city. I believe the from, city I don't know about it from what you said. I believe it was a, a ward leaflet. I'm not. It's not my ward, so there's no reason why I should see it. That is a different matter entirely, anyway. So. Um, you, you're just being political now, as opposed to being. Well, leaflet. no, but then again, I, I guess that if, if a leaflet had been going out like that as a cabinet member, I'd have asked and seen a copy of it, particularly as your leader has typed himself as the councillor for Milton and Eastley this afternoon. Nikki, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, obviously last year we were looking at um, employing consultants to review the existing parking zones. Um, and I, I know it's mentioned in the report that we didn't manage to um, recruit any consultants that, to do that. Um, and apparently, um, we don't have any funding for them this year either. Um, but that's, that was what we were intending to do. And that, and that might still happen in the future. Nikki, did you want to say something? So, oh, it's still a possibility. Um, I don't obviously I don't work in finance, and um, hopefully, you know that that can happen at some point, and we can have external people reviewing the existing parking zones. Right. Are there any more comments to to make now about from Councillor Bosher or Heaney about um, what we've done so far today? Well, I'd say one comment if I may. Um, I know Simon wants to say anything else, but I said a comment on the, um, on the overall. I, I can't understand strategy. you, I'm afraid. Sorry? I can't understand you, sort of going in and out. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put on my lecturer voice then. I'm sitting in my room and I don't share it when I'm in my room. Um, <clears throat> looking at the way the programmes were put together, it, the report last year and this year says it's adopting a strategic approach and a rolling program. But it's interesting to note that last year, um, the cabinet member decided to start a whole new stream in the H area, HC, which would have increased the amount of work that the party had to do. It didn't seem to me to be very much like a strategic approach. Because these areas hadn't got any issues with other parking zones or other pressure, merely to do with the fact people had more cars than they did the roads could cope. Fortunately, I think the cabinet member has been saved by the residents who rejected the <laughs> No, um, the reason it was put in, because residents... Well, hang on, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. I thought you couldn't hear. Um, Apologise. I haven't finished. So that, that residents have rejected it, actually saved you, because the ability for you to carry your rolling program to the south would have been severely limited, given where we are now. Um, so effectively, we didn't have a rolling program strategy last year. We had opening up a whole new zone and a whole new potential area for more parking space. What I'm concerned about now, that the two issues that the current member, I think, has to deal with it are one, the schemes have been waiting for a considerable number of years for issues to be dealt with came out of previous decisions around parking schemes. And we've given some examples in uh, uh, Nelson Ward, in Fratton Ward, etc. These are not being dealt with. Yet we are now saying we're going to open up a whole new area of uh, dental consultation in Milton. Now it's not a, a coincidence 
the back in uh, uh, July, early August, the Liberal Democrats put a leaflet out saying there's going to be a whole load of new parking schemes, even before we considered the report, or there was a report actually in existence saying we're going to have new parking schemes in those areas. So what I'm questioning is the critical judgment being made here about what is a priority. The idea of having the eight zone to open up a whole new area was a huge mistake. But luckily, people rejected it. So you've now been saying it's Going to the end zone doesn't seem to me to be justified when we've got other areas which could be dealt with, some of them quite small. And I think that your judgment as current member should be to be looking at some of those and dealing with them because they've been waiting five or six years. But I think the priority should be what you in the waiting list, not new zones in C, in B, and in F. Well, all I can say about Amy is that um, um, in AC, they had um, they'd been on the list in 2012, 2012, or before 2012, when it was suspended. So that is why they came back in. It wasn't since 2015, it was since 2012. And that was at the, because it inundated with requests. Sorry, so, so, just interrupt there. So you're saying Ferry Road, Kingsley Road, and Loxway Road areas have requests going back to 2012. No, I was talking about HC. Um, Graham right. was saying why I had introduced a new stream, and I said it's because um, they had been, uh, they were on, they were third on the list to be surveyed after um, Cosham, which Councillor. Um, Fleming put in, I, I can't remember which caution one it was, and um, put in, I can't remember, they were third when um, the residence parking was suspended. So that's why, and then people kept asking us uh, when it was going to happen. So that's why it came in. Nikki? I think it's, it's probably worth mentioning that HC today was on the original programme in 2015, and that caused a lot. Then. Um, so it wasn't the whole work stream that appeared, the request for the rolling program that then developed HC around, around the surrounding areas. It didn't all appear at once, it was the concerns about HC that um, put that rolling program up there. And by freeing up the resource of Allison um, to work on the M, the now the southern area, we will be able to do that much quicker than if we were both working on different parts of the city. Okay, let's get back to um, the actual um, recommendations, which are, can I get them, hang on, um, and th but note the progress, there has been a lot of progress made, um, the amended program, table one, read. I, I think that needs to have some amendments to it, uh, uh, possibly. Um, M I and M H. Um, I don't know whether they're in the right places. Lynn, you can't you can't actually do that. You can't actually change the body of the report. And I'm not. I'm not asking to change the body of the report. I'm saying that we need to look at it. Can I offer some reassurance? Hopefully, yeah. the M H. Obviously, is is going to be September, and then consultation on MI um, October. So they are very close together. It's not that one is at the beginning of a quarter and the one is at the end of. A quarter. Okay, and that that's just in response to what people have been asking, which you know is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be democratic, listening to people and um, adjusting things accordingly. Um, so if that yeah, is going to happen, that that's fine by me. And um, and note that if the work stream set out until everyone reaches a point where RPZs are not wanted or needed by residents of the next edge, this is, the, is the area with the highest priority score shown in Table 2, which is what we've already got. So are you, sorry Lynn, just for clarification, are you amending the programme set out in Table 1? No, no, I am saying to Nikki that I think this is something we need to look at to, to adjust the, 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 the dates maybe, if it's possible, or um, to get them closer together. And that is becoming from residents who are concerned in, M in MI um, that they're going to be sort of um, inundated. So if we can do something to address that, that's fine. Well, Not changing the order of things at all, but just make, making the data a bit closer so that uh, people are not uh, disproportionately affected. 
Well, I, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm making a, I'm just making a moot point. You probably say I'm being difficult. But Table 1 actually has dates against it for the formal and informal consultations. Mm -hmm. Recommendation B says the amended program set out in Table 1 is agreed. So if you, if, if you accept Recommendation B, you leave it where it is. If you want to change it, you either have to remove Recommendation B because you're not agreeing it, and, and come back again another day. You, can, you, you can't agree something and then change it. The amended program, if, you're, if you are agreeing it, is what you stick to. Can I maybe clarify that MI is in October, November, December? And I think Councillor Slag's just asking if it's, if it's more like October rather than the end of December. Is that what you mean? Well, that's fine in that respect, oh. but you set down the windows for the program. Therefore, if you are agreeing it, you have to stick with those windows. So right. I know I know some of the deputations said, bring this one forward, can we do that sooner rather than later? Effectively, if you want to agree with them and do that, you have to remove recommendation B. If you are going to disagree with your colleagues, then you have to accept recommendation B as is, and Nikki has to do the consultations in the time windows that you put them down. That's the black and white of, of the recommendations that have been written there. I, I agree, Simon, but we've also got to listen to what residents are saying. So if we can actually minimise the disruption to MI in any way, and it, it's not altering the table at, at all. MH is, is um, seen first and, and MI later, but if, if the gap between them is, is closer, then residents benefit. And I think that's important that residents do um, benefit and we, we see that we're listening to them. If we have to go back and, and do this again, then that delays the whole thing, which is not um, sensible at all. That's not what I'm suggesting, Lynn. All I'm saying is if you want to follow the recommendations, which are reasonably black and white, you have to stick to the table that's uh, dealt with in, in Table 1. You can rewrite uh, recommendation B if that's what you choose to do uh, on that basis. But you've also got to bear in mind, and I'm trying to be helpful here, there is the displacement and the angst comes around when a parking zone goes live. So it's not necessarily about informal or formal consultation. Yeah, I it's about when the, the zone goes live. So if you stick to your consultation periods, you can accept recommendation B. You just tweak it at the end when it's implemented so it all goes in at the same time. Absolutely. It's fine. So I'm happy to accept all three recommendations. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I didn't miss anything Thank else. you. Thank you, Lynn, for your forbearance. <laughs>